The Charm Fable, Mousie and the Golden Book, written by Nicholas S. Casal, copyright 2018, published by Alpine Line Publishers, as read by Lies. Chapter 1. In those days, a wrong-hearted cat sorceress named Felicia Murr ruled over all mice. Our people were slaves forced to surrender the fruits of their labors to Queen Felicia's minions whenever they demanded. Mice were forced into one of two professions, farming or scavenging. The farmers worked their paws to the bone every day and kept only the smallest part of their harvest. Scavengers had an even more dangerous existence, traveling into the ancient ruined cities of the tall apes to seek treasures they would never be allowed to keep. It was on one such scavenging mission that Mousie's father, Topo Soros had disappeared without a trace. One day, when Mousie was just a pup, after his daily chores were done, he wandered away from his mother's farmhouse, down to the creek to play. He kept an eye on the shadows cast upon the ground, knowing that if he stayed out until after sundown, the queen's nocturnal patrol, vampire bats, would soon fill the skies, and he'd be fair game for them to snatch up to a place from whence he'd never return. Mousie was never one for sports or competitive games. He did not play ball with the hedgehogs, squirrels, or even his twelve brothers and fourteen sisters, for even among other mice, he was quite small. Instead, he liked to let his imagination carry him away to flights of fancy. Sometimes, he'd imagine himself as a noble warrior or the pilot of an airship. Other times, he'd imagine he was anything but a simple mouse. At the creek, he hopped from one round stone to another, gripping the rocks with the pads of his paws. He pretended he was a bear, leaping from one mountaintop to the next while the ocean raged below him. Of course, as a child, he had so little understanding of how large bears truly were. Fish far larger than he swam by, and he pretended they were whales, though he had only ever heard stories of such sea beasts. His game of bear jump came to a halt, however, when a groan of pain fell upon his large ears. He hopped back to the shore and followed the sound, until he found the source. Lying upon the shore was a frog, dressed in shining silver armor. The frog was nearly twice Mousie's size, and his face was covered in bruises. He croaked in pain again, screwing his eyes shut. Mousie glanced back and forth for any sign of an adult, someone better fit to help this poor amphibian. But he soon realized that if anyone was going to help this stranger, it would have to be he. Always be wary of strangers. This proverb was not just something his father and mother had taught him, but was well known among mouse kind in those days. Even so, he could not leave this green amphibian to his fate. What's wrong? He squeaked as he drew near. Oh, wee one, croaked the frog, Great is my woe. I have been defeated this day in dreadful battle against insidious toads. Ten terrible toads trounced me at once, the cruel knaves. T'was an unfair fight, and I fear without healing, I am not long for this world. That's terrible, squeaked Mousie. But I think I can help you. My mom is a healer. I would be most grateful to you, little mouse, croaked the frog. But alas, I am afraid I cannot walk. My injuries are too injurious. I can help with that too, said Mousie. He hopped over to the opposite shore where he'd spotted some driftwood. He took a stick with a Y shape at the top, then brought it back to the frog. In Mousie's pocket were bandages his mother always made him carry with him, lest he skin his knee. He wrapped the bandages around the top of the crutch to make it softer under Sir Rane's arm. Once he'd gotten the frog up to his feet, he slipped the stick under his arm, allowing his new amphibious friend to use it as a crutch. Mousie stood on the frog's side, opposite from the crutch, and supported him under his arm as they made their way back toward the town of Ochber. You show great kindness to strangers, said the frog. Tis a rare thing, truly. Surely one so virtuous will be blessed. Might I know my new friend's name? I'm Mousie, Mousie Soros. The frog nodded his head. An easy name to remember. I am called Sir Ronnie of the Dank Marsh. The frog tapped the symbol on his breastplate. 
which was a tree with vines hanging from its branches. Sir? Mousy looked up at the frog's bruised face. So, you are a knight? Sir Rane faltered. He would have tumbled into the stream had Mousy not caught him. Have you not heard of my deeds? Uh, the tales of Sir Rane Salamander's Bane? The stories of Sir Rane, victor of the slimy swamp? The champion of the fearsome fen? A hero of the black bog? I am afraid I haven't, said Mousy. He scratched one of his ears and bit his lip. Uh, forgive me. We here in Ockbert do not hear many great tales. We only hear what Queen Felicia allows us to. Oh? croaked Sir Rane. His nostrils flared. She must be a truly terrible tyrant to deny you such epics. When I am well again, I shall repay your kindness by showing her what is what. Shh! Mousy glanced back and forth to be sure that none of the villagers nearby had heard the frog knight's words. Mousy had drawn enough attention to himself by helping this outsider. He didn't need to add talk of rebellion to the list of reasons for the weasels of the day patrol to pay him a visit. Queen Felicia is a powerful sorceress, he whispered. Her magic is great and her wrath is terrible. You'd best not anger her. Serrane sighed and nodded his head. I see. She truly has a hold on you people. His tongue slipped out and licked one of his eyeballs. Very well. I shall strive not to cause trouble for you, my friend. Mom! Mousy called out as they drew near the farmhouse. Mousy's mother looked up from her plow. Her eyes widened and pupils narrowed when she spotted the frog in armor her son was helping limp towards their house. Mouse Fred Suris! What are you doing? She cried, pulling on her own ears. He's hurt, Mousy squeaked back. Please help him. His mother groaned and rushed to the front door of the house. Get him inside. Uh, hurry. Always an obedient child, Mousy did as he was told. He brought the frog inside and eased him onto the top of the dinner table. As far as he could tell, it was the only surface big enough to support Sir Rane. Mousy's mother dug through the cupboards until she found a medicine bottle, one Mousy knew that he was never to touch without her permission. She filled a ladle with the contents and held it up to the frog's lips. Drink this. It will help with the pain. I thank ye kindly, ma'am, croaked Sir Rane. He sipped the medicine and his face contorted in disgust. There, begging your pardon, ma'am, but might you have some that's nat flavored rather than whatever this is? I'm sorry, but blackberry flavor is all we have, said Mousy's mother, resting her paws on her hips. We're not used to treating frogs in this house. If you don't want it... Before she could finish her statement, Sir Rane gulped down all the medicine in the ladle at once. His whole body shook, and he made a clicking sound in the back of his throat. No, thank you kindly, ma'am. I just need to be grateful for what help I can get. Yes, Miss Souris said flatly. Where does it hurt? My face, my head... My right ankle and my elbows, croaked Sir Rane. Oh, is that all? said Miss Suris. She and Sir Rane shared a chuckle. She lifted Sir Rane's leg and slipped off his boot. The frog winced as she did so, and his fingers gripped the edge of the table. Looks like a sprain, she said. Nothing broken, thank heaven. Mousy, go fetch the splint and bandages. Yes, Mom. Mousy rushed off to retrieve the supplies she requested. As her treatment of Sir Rane's injuries went on, he worked as her assistant, bringing whatever she said she needed. Soon, all of his brothers and sisters returned to the small hovel, all rattling off questions about the green beast who lay upon the dinner table. Children, said Sir Rane, I assure you, I mean no harm to you or your home. Your brother rescued me from a lonely demise, and your mother has been gracious enough to help heal my injuries. Button, Mousy's oldest sister scowled at her brother with folded arms. She shook her head, her great round ears flopping back and forth. Mousy had broken the cardinal rule that all mouse pups knew. He'd brought a stranger into their home. He gave his sister a pleading look in hopes that she would understand his act of compassion. Soon, Sir Rane had all the children distracted as he told his own stories. He told of a time when he fought five toads himself, swinging his sword as effortlessly as a conductor's baton. He told them of a time a bass had nearly eaten him, but he fought his way back out of its mouth. 
Later that same day, he'd serve the bass to his comrades for dinner. He told them of something called an octopus, a creature that sounded far too bizarre to be real. He spoke of the desert snake king, a cobra who could spit his venom and kill his prey from afar. Serrane had barely escaped that encounter with his life. Most intriguing, though, was his tale of the summer fireflies. Thousands of luminescent bugs filled the air, and Serrane felt as if he were walking among the stars. Each firefly told him a prophecy of the future, and since then he had seen all but two come true. Like his brothers and sisters, Mousy hung on the frog knight's every word, excited to hear tales of lands so far away from the little town of Ochber. They could hardly imagine just how enormous the world truly was, and what sorts of wonders it held. The sun set over the horizon, and Mrs. Souris got to work on preparing bread for her children's supper, when there was a knock on the door. All of the children fell silent in an instant. What is it? Sir Rane said, glancing up at the door to see what had them all so frightened. Mousie slipped a paw over his lips and motioned for him to be quiet. Mrs. Souris trembled as she approached the front door. She rested her paw on the handle and asked, Who's there? Lieutenant Nicked of the Nocturnal Patrol. Came a low voice from the other side of the door. Open up. Now. Mrs. Souris glanced back at her children and Sir Rane, bit her lip, then slowly opened the front door. Just outside the door stood six bats, each clad in black armor, with black helmets covering their faces. The one at the front was the smallest of any of them, and he shoved his way past Mrs. Souris as he entered their hovel. Under the visor, his red eyes settled on Serrane. So it's true. Serrane sat up, his fists clenched and his eyes narrowing to slits. Nicked drew a sword from his belt and pointed the tip at Sir Rane. We've been looking all over for you, Rane. The Toad King has offered a great reward to Queen Felicia for your capture, as I'm sure you've guessed by now. I will come quietly, Sir Rane groaned as he stood from the table, but only if you promise not to hurt these mice. Most of the family can go about their lives as before said Nicked, his voice reverberating behind his steel visor. But there is one we must take in for questioning. Which one of you pups is named Mousy? All of the pups were silent, as was Mrs. Souris. Sir Rane also kept his mouth shut and sneered at the bat. Nicked waved his claw to the other bats, and they all barged through the door of the hovel, crawling on all fours. Each stood on his hind legs, drew his sword, and pointed it at the family of mice. I don't want to get violent, but my subordinates do, said Nicked. Mousy, whoever you are, you have until the count of five to step forward. Otherwise, we will put your entire family to the sword. You wouldn't dare, croaked Sir Rane. He raised his fists. I'm far bigger than any of you. I'll crush all of you if you dare try. Most of the bats cackled under their steel helmets, their voices high-pitched. Nicked shook his head. Rane, don't be a fool. You are injured and unarmed. Any fight would be one-sided. You will not save these pups, so do not give us more reason to use violence. Nick turned to the mice again and said, One, two... Three. Mousy jumped to his feet. I'm the one you want. Don't hurt my family. Nicked reached out and seized Mousy by the shoulder. No! Mrs. Soros shouted. She reached out to push Nicked away from Mousy, but Nicked struck her face with the pommel of his sword. The blow sent her sprawling back onto the ground. Don't try that again. Vermin! growled Nicked. I'm warning you. Mousy looked over at his mother, trying to see if she was still moving. She appeared to be breathing, but her eyes were shut. She made no attempt to move. The other bats all gathered around Sir Rane, their blades still pointed at his face in case he tried to fight back. One slipped around to his back and clapped his wrists in manacles behind him. The bats all pushed Sir Rane and Mousy out of the hovel and out to the streets of Ochber. Mousy's skin felt cold under his fur as he looked up at the night sky. How many times had he heard a mouse scream in terror as bats had carried them away into that blackness? Never once had he seen any of them return. 
What terrible fate awaited him? To what dark dungeon would these bats take him? Nicked, bound Mousy's hands, ensuring that the knots were tight. If you do not struggle, you will not fall, he said. Do not fear, pup, Serane whispered to Mousy. I've been in far more dangerous situations than this. Those were the last words Mousy heard before Nicked took off into the air, carrying him in his claws. Chapter 2 Distant Echoes in the Darkness A Voice Down the Hall Take this one! Was it day? Was it night? Was it sunny outside or was it raining? Mousy felt as if he'd entered the realm of the dead as he sat in that clammy prison cell. How long had he been there? He couldn't know. Every so often the guards would come by with a crust of bread so hard he feared he'd break his teeth on it. The pain of those rock-hard rations in his stomach was almost as bad as the hunger itself. If he assumed that the guards dropped off his rations once a day, then it had been three days in that cell. But that was only a guess. The sound of footsteps approaching. There was a flickering light moving down the hall. Were they coming for him? He was determined not to go down without a fight. Mousy bared his teeth and clenched his paws into fists. His ankle was still chained to the ground, but whoever had come to collect him for whatever fate they had in mind would not walk away unscathed. The footsteps drew closer. The sound of steel boots on the brick floor. Clang. 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 Lieutenant Nicked stepped in front of Mousy's cage. His body covered head to toe in black armor. He held up a lantern in his left claw. Mouse Fred, he said, if you do not resist me, I will not harm you. Mousy sneered at him, his lips curling up over his teeth. He stood as tall as he could, trying to look as menacing as possible. Nicked chuckled. I am serious. You are not to be executed, neither are you to be tortured. I simply wish to talk. I promise. Now, will you cooperate? Mousy thought about it for a moment. Truly, he had no reason to trust this bat. Nicked was a member of the Queen's Nocturnal Patrol. Many a mouse had disappeared when these beasts snatched them off the ground in the middle of the night simply for violating curfew. Then there was the undeniable fact that Nicked himself had struck Mousy's mother in the face. Now that he thought about it, though, Nicked could have simply slain her, were he truly as malicious as the others. Had he run her through with his blade, he wouldn't have suffered any consequence but he chose to strike her merely with his weapon's pommel. Perhaps he is more merciful than the others. Did Mousy dare to think it? Did he dare trust someone who was both a stranger and part of the queen's army? He unclenched his fists and closed his lips. Now that he thought about it, even if he did try to fight back, he probably wouldn't even hurt Lieutenant Nicked. His teeth would never pierce his armor, and fighting an armored foe barehanded was beyond foolish. Good boy said Nicked as he unlocked Mousy's cell and opened the door. He stepped inside and unlocked the chain around Mousy's ankle as well. You can carry the lantern, he said, holding it out to him. Mousy reached out his paws to grasp the bottom. Not from the bottom, Nicked shouted at him. Think, pup. Grasp it from the ring at the top, otherwise you'll burn your paws. Mousy grasped the ring of the lantern in both paws as he was told. Nicked groaned and shook his head. How have you survived this long without any sense? Mousy really didn't think this insult was at all fair, since mice were forbidden to leave their homes after night fell. They had little need for lanterns. At most, they used candles around the house when it got dark. Even so, he wasn't about to argue with one who could take his life so easily on a whim. Mousy followed Nick down the halls of the dungeon. His eyes occasionally wandered to the other prisoners in their cells. Sick and starving mice, squirrels, hedgehogs, shrews, and gophers sat in each. In one cell, Mousy spied a gray rabbit, curled up in a ball, muttering to himself and crying. In another, he spotted a shrew scratching away at the back wall of his cell. But it was his claws that were wearing down, not the bricks. Nicked opened a wooden door at the end of the hallway, one without a window. Inside. Now. Mousy obeyed, entering the room with his lantern still firmly in paw. Nicked closed the door behind them and gestured to the table in the middle of the room. Have a seat. Again, Mousy did as he was told. He pulled up his tail, so as not to sit on it, and seated himself at the table. Nicked latched the door shut, then reached up to remove his black helmet. 
Mousy's mind was abuzz with question when he saw Nick's face for the first time. The nocturnal patrol beast did not have the long pointed ears that Mousy had expected of a vampire bat, but rather round ears, much like his own. His nose was not a short snout, but rather came down to a narrow point, with whiskers drooping downward. When he smiled, it seemed that his lips had not concealed fangs, but rather four incisors. Nicked, then reached over to his left wing and unclasped something from his armor. The leathery wing fell away, revealing it was fake. Nicked then did the same to the other side and held up his paws for Mousy to see. You're not really a bat. Mousy tilted his head to one side, thoroughly confused. No, I'm not, said Nicked. Like you, I am a mouse. His eyes, so fierce and terrible before, now softened, and a friendly smile pulled on the corners of his lips. We have met before. Do you recognize me? Mousy stared for a moment, trying to remember where he might have seen this mouse before. I'm sorry, should I? Nicked grunted in disapproval. Never mind. You'll figure it out in time. He began to pace the room, all the while resting one paw on the hilt of his sword. Years ago, I was a scavenger. In the ruins, I discovered an old, magical relic, something capable of allowing even a mouse to fly. I used it to make for myself artificial wings, and presented them to Queen Felicia, along with my request to join the Nocturnal Patrol. She accepted my gifts, both the relic and my own life. In this way, I became the first mouse to rise above his station and become truly valuable to Her Majesty. Though he would not let his face betray his rage, Mousy felt a deep anger burning inside of him once he learned the truth about Nicked. He'd betrayed his own kind, joining Queen Felicia's army. Here he was, someone who'd suffered under the cruel and oppressive rule of that sorceress cat, and now he had become a part of it. Nicked continued, It took me years to rise up to the rank of lieutenant, but now that I'm here I have been granted a special authority. I can recruit others into the Nocturnal Patrol. Mouse Fred, I want you to be my first apprentice. Why me? Mousy asked, wringing his paws together under the table. What's so special about me? Nick stared at Mousy for a moment, as if confused by the question. Had he not expected skepticism, or anything other than total gratitude for such an offer? Why you? Nick repeated, his brows furrowed. Well... I have my reasons, but consider this. You brought that frog knight back to your home completely on your own. You helped him walk from the creek all the way back to your mother's farmhouse. Isn't that why I got in trouble? Mousy asked. I helped a stranger? Yes, but what interests me is that you were able to do it, said Nicked, pointing a claw at Mousy. Clearly, for one so small, you have strength beyond that of other mice. You and I have that in common. The Nocturnal Patrol could use a strong recruit like you. What do you say, Mouse Fred? Will you join us? No, said Mousy, shaking his head. Snake's teeth, no! His mother had warned him not to use such language, but under the circumstances it seemed appropriate enough. I'm not going to join the same army that snatches wayward mice up in the middle of the night and throws them into dark dungeons? Nicked groaned and folded his arms in front of his chest. I was worried you'd say that. He tilted an ear towards the door, then leaned in closer to Mousy and whispered, I want you to think a little more carefully about your situation. That frog was a foreign knight. By helping him, you harbored an enemy of the crown. Do you realize what that means? Your actions were treason and the usual punishment for treason is death by petrification. Petri... what? They'll turn you to stone, Nicked hissed. They'll force you to drink a poison that will turn your whole body to solid rock. Then they'll post your statue. Well, if they don't post it in the Grey Menagerie outside the Queen's Castle, then in your hometown as a warning to anyone else who commits treason. Think of your mother. Think of your brothers and sisters. Do you really want them to see that? I... Nicked grasped Mousy's shoulder. Listen to me, pup. Join the Nocturnal Patrol. It's the only way they'll allow you to live. Petrification is a slow death. 
First your stomach turns to stone, then your guts, then the inside of your throat, and it just spreads from there. It takes hours before it's over. I told my commander that I was going to recruit you, and he agreed to tell the executioners to hold off for now. This is your only chance. Mousy hung his head in defeat. He knew that he was destined to suffer a terrible fate the instant Nicht had carried him away from his home. For a moment, he dared to hope that Nicht was merciful enough to let him go or release him after just a few lashes of a whip. Now he realized that his fate was crueler than he could have imagined. He had to choose to either join Queen Felicia's army or suffer a slow death. Then again, when he thought about it, if he were to undergo some of Nick's training, there was bound to come an opportunity to escape sooner or later. Certainly, the first time he tried on those false wings, he would be a free mouse. Fine, said Mousy. I'll join the nocturnal patrol. Nick breathed a sigh of relief and nodded his head. Good, pup. We'll start your training right away. As of this moment, you are my new apprentice. Mousy's guts turned at the words, but he buried his emotions deep. He had a feeling he'd have to stomach a lot of wrong before he got a chance to flee. This preview has been created for you by Lies and Scandal Lit. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more quality book previews. Thank you.